In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. I go. I hope you guys had <clears throat> happy Palm Sunday and a blessed Holy Week. Uh, this PowerPoint is going to be talking about the Holy Week, and these icons are all the major events, and we know about these major events through the Gospel. So, of course, you know, prayer is important, and I've talked about the slide before. I just wanted to reference the pictures on the right, that we can change our houses, or not change, but add elements of what we see in church um, to help us pray the best that easier. So, <clears throat> the first day of Holy Week is the Feast of Palm Sunday. And the Feast of Palm Sunday is one of the seven major feasts of the Lord. Of course, you know, this means major that has to do with our salvation. Okay, And this rite is practiced from Saturday night in the Vespers all the way through Sunday until the end of liturgy. The common hymn that is recited and that we're listening to is Evlogimenos. The common word repeated in that hymn and throughout the time of Palm Sunday festivities is called Usanna or Hosanna. Hosanna means save us. Okay? And the people were crying out to Jesus to save them. Okay? But they thought saving in a materialistic manner. That they were going to be saved from the Roman Empire. But no, Jesus came for something great. He came to save the whole entire world from sin. And of course, to bring them to eternal life with Him in the paradise. So, some overall rites in the Passion Week. So, now Palm Sunday has ended. We are now going to the general funeral prayer. And the hymn we're listening to now is It Vete Anastasis. So, Holy Week is from... Feast of Palm Sunday to Feast of Resurrection. Passion Week, though, is from Monday to Friday, and that's because that's the passions of the Lord. Okay? There are no liturgical services except for Covenant Thursday. Okay? Which follows similar liturgical rules, but not the same. There's also no ordination, marriages, for the whole week. The church is usually decorated in black or a similar color. And the only prayers allowed for people to pray in their homes and... And the churches are Beska service prayers. Okay? And this is located in the Beska book or in Coptic Creator under the special square. Okay? And you can find it there. It will tell you all the days. Now, the tune that we're using now is called Mournful Tune. Okay? And the Kiri Laysons that we would usually pray in the Akbeya are now transformed. Not transformed, but they are Thokte Tigom in the Beska rite. Okay, and the interesting thing is that the second verse of Thok Te Tigom changes twice. When do they change? They change on Wednesday if we add Pesotir and Agathos, because this is when Judas betrayed Christ, and the um, salvation plan is going to be s seen. And on the eve of Friday, we add Tagum, which is a super long part. You guys should look into it yourselves. Now, an interesting rite of the church is that what happens? The deacon chorus is moved down. Where is the deacon chorus? It's in one of the choruses, okay, called the third chorus or the chorus of the layman. Okay. And we pray the whole Beska there. Now, a contemplation why? Also, this rite, sorry, is also an only, only preserved in the ancient monasteries. Okay. And it's like... Behind the iconostasis, the deacon stand, and then there would be another course even behind that. That's where the course of the layman would stand. Now, the overall setup. There's prophecies, then the homilies. The homilies is just a sermon from someone, from a church father, like St. Athanasius the Apostolic. Okay? And then there's the doxology, which is Tok Te Tigom. Then there's the psalm, which is said in the Adribi tune. Okay, which is the same tune as Ke Eberto. And then there's the gospel, which is what we're listening to right now, and the mournful tune. Then after that, there's exposition. And then the litanies are usually preserved for the priests that we would pray in church, but you can pray them at home with your family. Now, let's talk about Monday. What happened on Monday? Jesus cursed the fig tree. Okay? What is the significance of the cursing of the fig tree? The fig tree should be having figs. This is the season of figs, and it should be sprouting out figs, but 
its leaves were giving off the false impression that it's going to bear fruit. Just like who else do we know? The Pharisees and the Jewish people of that time. The Jewish people of that time, what do they have? Their law, the temple, the sacrifices, the feasts, everything. But they didn't have the fruits, the fruits inside them of love, faith, holiness, humility, and refusing and um, accepting Jesus. But they refused to accept Jesus. They didn't want him at all. They just wanted them, him to save him from the Roman Empire. Anything else, we don't care. Okay, And we know that God hates hypocrisy, especially in the temple. And he spent many days teaching them and performing miracles in the temple, showing him that he truly is God. But they didn't want to believe. Now, moving on to Tuesday. What happened Tuesday? Tuesday is Jesus' last day in the temple. Okay, He spent it uh, revealing many mysteries to the disciples. And he answered the questions of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who were only trying to trick him. Now, he also spoke many parables like the vine dressers, the wedding of the king's son, and the ten virgins. And the ten virgins, we, re we should be familiar with it because it is read every single first watch of the midnight praises in the Ekbeya, towards the end of the Ekbeya. Now, he also talked about a second coming, the judgment day, and the destruction of the temple, which we know was fulfilled, <clears throat> excuse me, which was fulfilled after the crucifixion. Now, the message of today is to watch and be ready because we do not know when Jesus Christ is coming again, but we need to have our lamps lit. And at night, the chief priests of that day, sorry, the chief priests in that day plotted to kill Jesus that night, okay? So what happened Wednesday? Wednesday, we call it Betrayal Wednesday. And the church says, Judas, Judas, you condemn Jesus, okay? And this is the hymn we're listening to now. He betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver, which is equivalent to the price of a slave at that time. Okay? So, um, we refrain from greeting because we know that Jesus Christ is going to be kissed by Judas on the cheek. And we don't want to be part of that. Now, an interesting second part of Wednesday. Okay? The Psalm of Itchinun which is also the same tune as what the psalm picketh thrown us that we're going to hear on Good Friday. Okay? Jesus dines with Simon the leper and grants the sinner woman forgiveness and appreciates the spikenard oil that she anointed his feet. Now, who are we going to be? Are we going to be Judas Iscariot who betrays Jesus for the price of a slave? Or are we going to be the sinner woman who asks for forgiveness and pours oil over his head. An interesting part that one of the church fathers likes to contemplate on, he said what? He said, it's interesting. Judas Iscariot was complaining that the sinner woman was pouring oil on this, uh, the sinner woman was pouring oil on Jesus' head, but... When it came to him selling him, he decided to sell him for the equivalent of a slave. Not even an expensive or valuable thing. He only, so he only sold him for 30 pieces of silver. Not that selling Jesus is okay, but he sold him for the cheapest price possible. Okay? And we don't want to be part of that group. Okay? We want to be like the Samaritan... Sorry, the sinner woman. Now... Covenant Thursday. This is one of the seven minor feasts of the Lord. And an interesting hymn that we're going to hear right now is called Eproxe Anton. Beautiful hymn. It's a very long hymn. If you guys have time, uh, it would be really nice for you to um, listen to it. So what happens Covenant Thursday? Okay. First of all, it's in the house of St. Mark. How do we know that? <clears throat> Because it's mentioned. Second. What, sorry, the first event in the house of Mark. Jesus now washed the feet of his disciples. Okay. Then he eats the Passover and tells them one would betray him. Then we know he gives Judas the... <clears throat> excuse me. He gives him the piece of bread and the... And then Judas, we know he leaves and fully betrays Jesus. 
But after Judas left, he instituted, Jesus Christ instituted the divine sacrament of the Eucharist, or what we like to call communion, right? Here, take my body, drink my blood. This is the new covenant, and it's for the remission of sins, okay? One of the interesting and uh, the last sections of Covenant Thursday, he gives a wonderful speech, okay? And <clears throat> this is on Mount Olive. And we know that his sweat was dropping like drops of blood. Okay, why? Because he was very concerned about all the sins that are going to be put on him. Okay? He wasn't concerned about being crucified or being beat. No. He can handle all of that. But he was he's a sinless person, and now all the sin is being on him. So he's he's very worried. And that's why even he asks the Father, take this cup away from me. Okay? Not because he's afraid of being crucified, no, because all sin will be put on him, okay? <clears throat> so, from then, uh, sorry, I would also like to mention, uh, a significant part of Covenant Thursday. Covenant Thursday, it is a minor feast of the Lord, okay? So, the rite, it's still mournful. We pray Besta, and we do the procession of um, Judas going in the opposite direction of a procession. And then we have, of course, the the end, like Jesus Christ washed the disciples' feet. But in the liturgy, the Eucharist, right, the tune changes to an annual tune, and the Gospels even read like normal. <clears throat> That's a very important key part. This is still a minor feast. Okay? And then we know after that, of course, that Jesus spent the rest of the night not answering any of the chief priests. And he was in trial in darkness. They said that he was saying false witness. And they spat in his face and struck him. And we know that the last thing, St. Peter denied Jesus. And then that's it. Now... We're moving to Good Friday. And the hymn we're listening to right now, O Mono Genis, O Only Begotten Son, one of the greatest pieces or literal notes of the Coptic Orthodox Church. It's also said when the, pape, when the Pope, a new Pope is being enthroned. So, what happened during Good Friday? There are many trials. He goes from the Pharisees. Then he goes to the High Priest. Right? It's going in order. Then he goes to Pilate. Pilate finds no fault. He sends him back to he sends him to Herod. Herod says he's not doing anything for me. Sends him back to Pilate. Then the Jews start saying, "Crucify him! We don't want him. Kill him! Kill him! Kill him!" Okay, he was scourged. Then they put the crown of thorns on his head. They mocked him. They struck him on his head, and of course, many worse things. And then he carried his cross. In the sixth hour, the crucifixion took place. He was crucified on the cross, and there was darkness for three hours. The earth quaked, and that's why we turn off the lights in the church when we pray. Okay, during this hour. Then the ninth hour, <clears throat> he lifted his spirit. He said, it is done, and he died. Okay? So the tombs were opened at that exact time. And he spoke a, a couple sentences, then he died in the flesh. After that, now we're going to be listening to the burial hymn, Golgotha. One of, I'm sure, is our favorite hymns that we listen to every year. So they pierced his side and Joseph and Nicodemus buried him, right? And there's even a specific part in the hymn of Golgotha that says, uh, Yusuf Nim Nicodemus, the two, uh, put spices on his body and buried him. So we have a special part for them in, um, in the ritual, right? We, we remember them as well. That's it. And then we move on to Bright Saturday, the continuation of Holy Week. In this, we hear the, one of the most beautiful psalms, Psalm 151, which is, I am small among my brothers. And it's said in this tune that we're listening to right now. So, we praise God while He's buried, and like the angels in the tomb. That's why, okay, the rite of today is that it's half mournful, half 
uh, joyful. Even the gospel, it starts off, for example, like a psalm of David, blessed is the Lord God. And then the deacon will change the tune to the God of Israel. Alleluia. And then he goes back and reads the gospel in the same format. Half mournful, half joyful. Because yes, it's mournful that Jesus is in the tomb, but we know that he's going to be raised from the dead, and the angels are praising him in the tomb correct, uh, currently. So, what are the topics of the bright Saturday readings? Oh, sorry, another part is that we call it Apocalypse Night because we read the whole book of Revelation. So, the three topics of the readings. Salvation that Christ fulfilled on the cross, the living God that does not die, and even though he died in the flesh and was placed in the tomb, he remained alive with his divinity because he is God. And the divinity, which and the divinity did not leave his humanity, right? Abuna says that in the last confession, for a single moment, nor a twinkling of an eye, so on and so forth. For he is the living dead. For this reason, we saw blood and water coming out of his side, okay? And this is why we repeat Agiosa Thanatos Lainan in the Sali for Bright Saturday. Okay? And this means holy is the living who does not die, have mercy on us. So, the great joy that surrounded the righteous who were in Hades, we see through the rites and hymns, and the church is moved from joy to sadness. Remember, we said a very important part, okay? That, <clears throat> excuse me, that even though this is still a mournful time, okay? We're still practicing half mournful, but half joyful, because we know that he's going to be risen from the dead. Now, we have reached the Feast of Resurrection. So, what is the Resurrection? It is one of the seven major feasts of the Lord, and it's a true confirmation that we are saved and that Jesus is truly God. Okay, And we know that with joy comes with suffering, and with suffering joy is also present and is revealed to us through the Feast of Resurrection. Okay, So the tune changes, right? We started from joyful, or Shanini tune, okay, like Osanna, the Osanna tune, to mournful. Now back to joyful, and we're going to celebrate joyful for 50 days. Now, a very important key part the resurrection reenactment can only be done once, okay? And there has to be a Passion Week, or at least a Good Friday, for the good, for us to do the burial. To do the resurrection reenactment. Now a very, very, very important thing that we need to keep in mind is that this resurrection reenactment, this burial of flowers with spices, is not truly the body of Christ like the body and blood in the in the sacrament of the Eucharist or communion. Okay? This is just a representation of what happened, right? We're just trying to remember what happened, but it's not the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then we continue to remember him for the rest of the holy 50 days. So, something that I wanted to mention. If you guys paid attention, the colors of the slides, okay, change drastically. First of all, Holy Week, black. Black, prayer. Feast of Palm Sunday is gold, okay? Then we continue black. Covenant Thursday, very, very, very light, faint, faint gold color. Because it is still one of the seven minor feasts of our Lord, but it is still a mournful time during Passion Week. Friday, Good Friday, of course, it's black because we are sad, okay, that Jesus Christ is being crucified. Then bright Saturday, an off-white color, okay, half joyful, half mournful. Then clearly, Feast of the Resurrection is white because He is risen and... That's it. So I hope we can all take this time, okay, to truly contemplate and to truly focus on, of course, the joyful aspects of our Lord and the mournful aspects. And to truly read the readings and focus on what the Psalms and the prophecies are saying and what the expositions are revealing to us and what the Church Father writings are revealing to us. Now, I know sometimes it's difficult, but <clears throat> Annie, I hope you guys do it and you guys have a good time.